If you've ever wanted to do some processing in the background in an ASP.NET Core application, you will most likely come across the background service class. This is a nice class that provides you with a single method called execute async that will be called to run your background service. This is one time call for the duration of your application. So typically, if you want to periodically process data, you use a queue that your app can push data into, you code up an infinite while loop in the background service, and then put the background service to sleep for a period of time. And when it wakes up, it consumes any messages from the queue. That's all great, but consider HTTP requests coming into an API. We have a thread per request. So many requests all running concurrently. We have a single background service. So we have multiple into one. Hopefully you can start to see the problem that your request data is all getting queued up behind each other. So let's look at an enhanced version of this pattern that we can use to process our data more efficiently. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever it is that I find you. So today we're looking at ASP.NET Core background services and how we can process that data from our HTTP requests into a background service and try and avoid things getting queued up behind each other in a single queue. So what we've got is our background service that's sitting there running away, periodically waking up and then going back to sleep. So what we need is a single queue mechanism that we can use to insert data into from our HTTP requests and push that data such that the background service can then consume data from that queue. We then get our HTTP requests coming in. And what we're going to do is at the point that that HTTP request gets created, we're going to create another queue and we're going to push that queue into the previous queue. So this bigger queue isn't really a queue. It's just a list effectively or an array of these other queue items. So we've got our HTTP request queue inserted into our list of queues or queue of queues. We then get an item of work that we want to process from our HTTP request. So we push that from our HTTP request into that HTTP request queue. We then concurrently have other HTTP requests all running along the same at the same time. So they equally create their own queue, which we push into our list of queues and they're equally pushing their own data into their own respective queue. So we've got our list of queues with some queues in it and those queues have got some work items to be processed. Our background service then wakes up and it iterates over that list. For every request queue that it finds, it creates a background thread. Each of those threads then consumes the messages off of that queue, processes them, does what it needs to do. So in this case, it's pushing them to a database, but that could be an API call, logging out to a log, doing whatever it is that your background processing needs to actually do with those work items. Once those threads have completed, the service then goes back to sleep again. And in the meantime, our HTTP requests are merrily pushing more data into those queues. Now, at the end of the HTTP request, what we do is we flag that particular request queue that it's completed or it's closed. So we have to flag that there are going to be no more messages able to be posted into that particular queue. So our requests complete and they flag those queues as being completed. And then when our service wakes up again to process messages, it spawns its threads as it normally does. It processes the message. And then at the point where it's finished processing all the messages, what it's actually going to do is check to see whether or not that particular queue has been flagged for deletion. So is it complete? And if that's the case, it can remove it out of the list and then the thread can end and that's its processing completed. So it's cleared that queue out of the list. The other thread does exactly the same, finishes its processing, looks at the queue for, if it, is it completed? And if it is, it removes it out of the list. So what we finish up with is a nice clean application. Now there's no HTTP requests running. The background service is 
sitting there periodically waking up, checking a queue that is now empty. There's no queues in there to be processed and goes back to sleep again. So we're in a nice clean situation again, exactly as we started. So let's jump over to VS Code and see how we can code this up. So here I am in a terminal. So let's go and create ourselves a new ASP.NET Core project. So .NET new web API. I want to use MVC controllers in this case, and I'm going to call it efficient background service. And let's bring up Visual Studio Code. So this is our out of the box experience. Let's quickly fix this up so that this is working how we want it to inside of Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to generate the assets for debugging. Go into the launch, get rid of the server ready action, and I'm going to add a console option and use the integrated terminal. Don't need to do this, but I just find this easier to read because it stops you having duplicate entries in the debug console. So let's go and create our new background service. Let's paste in the start point for our background service. So we inherit from a background service. We override the execute async. We've just got some logging here to tell us that our background service has started. We elect to throw a cancellation token exception. So if someone cancels the task or the process is cancelled, then this will throw into our stopped section down here. And then we enter into an infinite while loop and we will essentially do our work inside of that periodically put ourselves to sleep for half a second. So that's our start point. So let's go and add that into the application itself. So over in program CS, we need to add that in to our builder so that it's aware of it. And if we build and quickly run this up, we can see that we get our log out to say that our background service has started. And then when I cancel the process, we get our cancellation token to say that our background service has been cancelled. So that's all running up correctly as we would expect. So let's go and create a class that will hold the data that we want to pass from our threads, from our request threads across to our background service. So a background service work item. And this is just a simple class where we can pass in some data. So we are passing in a message in this case, just a string. Okay, so that's what we're gonna pass across from our request thread into our background service to be processed. Now we need our queue. So let's go and create a work item buffer. We've got our work item buffer class and let's go and implement disposable and we'll see why we need that in a minute. But this class is going to have a channel within it. So a channel is essentially a, a .NET queue mechanism that we can use and we're saying that we're going to queue up these work items so let's give ourselves a constructor so that we can initialize that channel so we give it a maximum size number of elements that we're expecting in it so because it's only per request this particular queue then we're going to only expect 1024 you can change this to suit your needs we then have a method that we can use to push messages into the queue. So it takes a background worker service work item and pushes that into the queue using the writer object. We then have a method to try and get messages back out of the queue. So it does a try read and tells us whether or not it actually did it. For usability, I'm just going to add a try count as well that tells us how many is in the queue currently, if it can. And then what I'm going to do is add a flag to tell me whether the queue is still in use or not. And inside the dispose, I'm going to set that is open to false. So essentially when this queue gets disposed, we set this flag to say it's no longer open. It can no longer be written to. Now I know there is a completion thing that we can use against the writer. So there is a complete method that we could use, but there isn't anything that I can use against the reader or the channel itself. Once I've flagged it for completion to say that the channel is actually complete. It would be nice if there was a method in there to say is complete or has completed or some craziness like that, but there isn't. The idea behind the complete is that the reader can set a method to say when all the messages have been read out of a completed channel, then you can get flagged to say that the channel is now complete, but you have to have read all the messages and that's not quite what we want to do here. So we've got an is open that tells us whether or not 
this method has been disposed and this will be disposed by the dependency injection container as we'll see in a minute let's carry on and let's add now our list of work item buffers this is the one that's going to hold all of those work item buffer classes so all of the requests will get pushed into essentially this list so that gives us a nice convenient class to hold all of those and now let's jump back over to our program cs and plug all this into the dependency injection we add our work item buffers as a singleton and you'll see why we're instantiating this rather than letting the dependency injection container build this in a minute and then as i said we're going to add a scoped item and the scoped item is the actual queue per request so as a new request comes in this code will be run and so we add that new queue for that request into the list of queues and because we're adding it as a scope as i said earlier that will call the dispose method on the work item buffer when the request completes so now that we've got all the building blocks over in our weather forecast controller now we can change the constructor to inject us in our work item buffer so this is the one that's per request and now inside of our api method we can use that work item buffer and just enqueue some new background service work items and all i'm doing here is putting the current trace id into the message just so that we can see different request ids going through but i'm essentially queuing up two items that will be pushed to our background service per request and we can see number one and number two so now back in our background service now we can start looking at how we're going to process this new queue that we've created so let's push in our work item buffers from dependency injection so that's our singleton remember our queue of queues and for simplicity i'm going to keep all of this just in another method here so process work item buffers and we pass in the queue of queues here so let's go and create that method so i'm going to have a list of tasks then i'm going to have a for each that's going to iterate over all the queues in the list of queues and then we're going to add a task for each request queue that we've got so each work item buffer will create a task that will run on a background thread okay so we're spawning a new thread here to process the items that are in each work item buffer so within our newly spawned background thread we can now iterate over that particular work item buffer getting all the messages out of that particular queue and we have to check if work item is not null because that's a nullable that could be returned and then i'm going to simulate some long running task here so we actually do our work here but i'm going to simulate that with a delay and then just for demonstration purposes i'll log out what it is that we've actually processed so we can get our work item out and get the message out of that so once we've processed all the messages out of the queue what we then want to do is check if that particular queue is still open and if it's not so it's been closed i.e the request has completed so there'll be no more messages pushed onto that queue we can then remove that from the queue of queues but if it isn't then we leave it in there so that the next time we wake up we come round and we process whatever has been added into that particular queue or if it's been deleted at that point we would then remove it so we can only remove it once the request has actually finished and then the last thing that we need to do here is we've got this list of tasks that are all being spawned we need to wait for all of those tasks to complete before we can say that we've processed all of our queues and go back up to the main method of the background service and put it back to sleep again so we wait here for all of our tasks to complete and it's it's up to you in this particular case for demonstration purposes i'm not interested in cancelling i want these to try and complete but it could be in your situation that you want to pass down the parent cancellation token and if your parent process is cancelled then you abort processing all of these so it's entirely up to you whether or not you listen to a cancellation token i'm explicitly not here and that is it so let's build and run this up and open our test http i'm going to add in to ignore https certificate errors let's just run this 
and see what we get. So we get our weather come back and we can see that we've got a request here and two messages that have been processed already by our background service. And then I can bash kind of five or six times on here so that we get our messages coming back. And over here, we can see that we get message one, message two for the same request. Then we get message one for another request, message one for a separate request, message one for a separate request. So all the message ones for our various threads and then our message twos for our various threads. So we can see that our processing is correctly multi-threading these messages up. They're not all queued behind each other. And then if I come over to our background service and if I just put a breakpoint here, you can see it wakes up. And if I look at the work item buffers, you can see that work item buffer has zero entries in it now. So all of those request queues, the work item buffer items themselves, there aren't any in there. So we've got a nice clean empty queue sitting here waiting for requests to come in to process. So we've correctly tidied up our stuff. So we've got nothing hanging around. So it's all nice and clean. And that is it. It's that simple to create something that is a little bit more efficient than what you normally see with pushing data from ASP.NET requests into a background worker service. So hopefully you found that useful. And if you did, then please do give this video a like so that it can find more people. And if you haven't already, then consider hitting that subscribe button. That really helps me out and helps the channel grow. And I just need to thank my sponsors of the channel. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.